Hey CG leaders, I wanted to uh, share a couple things with you in this April video that I'm sending you. Uh, there's some announcements that I want to be able to share with you, and then there's also a short uh, training that I want to uh, give to you, a word of encouragement, hopefully, that's piggybacking off of our Wednesday night dinner that we had last week. And so I want to jump in and share some of the announcements with you. Uh, as you know, starting this month, and especially as we roll into uh, the opening of our auditorium on April 24th at, in Vintage Jefferson, we're really trying to solidify these location teams, one at Orleans and one at Jefferson. And one of the roles that's on both of those teams is a group's leader. And that group's leader is over uh, overseeing, helping me oversee all of our group's ministry and kind of working underneath of me to help you guys, uh, to care for you, to help you... Um, lead your groups, to multiply your groups. And so I wanted to introduce to you those two leaders and uh, put some uh, faces with names if you've never met them before. And so we have uh, Danny Curry. I got a little picture of Danny Curry. Hopefully you can see him. I tried to do this digital all day and I just, I'm not smart enough to figure it out. So you get a picture of him. But this is Danny. Danny is a community group leader at our Orleans location. And he's been a community group leader for quite some time now and is a phenomenal one and uh, has a heart for community groups and community group leaders and seeing uh, groups multiply. And so Danny is stepping into that role as a groups leader at the Orleans location. And then this is Nick and Chelsea Perrette. Uh, Nick and Chelsea live on the West Bank and uh, they lead the West Bank group. And so uh, Nick is stepping into that role for the Jefferson location. And I'm really excited about both of these individuals. Um, they have a passion. They want to see our groups strengthen. They want to see our groups grow. They want to see our leaders strengthen and grow. They want to see our groups and leaders multiply. And so I'm excited. Uh, I'm giving them a, um, some things to be able to work through and help us in. And uh, you'll probably be, be hearing from them uh, in the next week or so with some things. And so I'm excited to include them. The second thing that I want to share with you is about the the end of the month, the launch of our V. Jefferson uh, Auditorium and uh, kid space that's being renovated. And so I want to give you some details with that and also uh, a charge to you guys to be able to help us um, in that. And so the first thing, you probably heard some of this in the partner uh, newsletter that we sent out last week, but we are having a, a vintage block party. And that's what we're kind of uh, calling it, a vintage block party on April 22nd. That's a Friday night from 5.30 uh, to 8.30. And so this is an opportunity for um, not just those who are part of vintage, but also our neighbors, our friends, um, government officials, whoever we're trying to invite to come and get a first taste of our, of our new auditorium and see our property um, that we've expanded and grown. And so we're going to be doing that from 5.30 to 8.30. That whole night, we're going to have um, some food trucks there for dinner. We're going to have Plum Street Snowballs there for snowballs. We're also going to have Buku Bounce there with uh, bounce houses for the kids. What's really important is that at 7 p.m., we're having a ribbon-cutting ceremony. And then we're going to go into our new auditorium and uh, have some music, some worship. And then also, uh, Pastor Rob's going to share uh, some things, uh, some vision and, and some other cool things about the building and the property and vintage. And so that's happening on that Friday night. I want to encourage you to use that as an opportunity to really invite friends, people that might have not ever come to vintage, and use that as an opportunity to encourage them to come. The second thing is April 24th. That's the Sunday that we launch the Vintage Jefferson Auditorium. So we'll be back at Vintage Jefferson, 9 and 11 a.m. with the Kids Ministry. And the big change on April 24th is uh, the Vintage Orleans location. So we're going to an 11 a.m. with V Kids Ministry at Vintage Orleans, and then also having our 5 p.m., so no 7 p.m. So starting on April 24th, 9 and 11 a.m. at Vintage Jefferson with V Kids, 11 a.m. with V Kids at V Orleans, and then the 5 p.m. Now this is where you guys come in uh, to play, that you can be a huge, massive help. We're really wanting to canvas that neighborhood um, that is all around Vintage Jefferson to invite them uh, to this grand opening of our of our property, particularly on April 22nd on that Friday night. And so you're going to be getting more information about this probably uh, from Matthew Weaver, who is our Connect Leader and Campus Host uh, out at V Jefferson. 
But the week of April 18th through the 21st, that's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to really encourage a lot of our groups and people in Vintage to really come out during the evenings on those nights and uh, walk and just invite people in that neighborhood to this grand opening. And so you'll be getting more information about that, but I wanted to put that out, put that in your ear and let you know about that. Uh, March, uh, I'm sorry, April 18th through the 21st. And so that's coming up. I want to transition and just spend a few minutes talking about um, a topic that I really want to uh, share with you and really challenge and hopefully equip you in. Um, last Wednesday night, when we uh, we met and uh, we had a great night, Pastor Rob challenged us with those 10 leadership challenges. And there's three in particular that I really want to just uh, hone in on and expand a little more in a particular area that I think uh, is important for all of us, um, especially us as community group leaders. And those three were this, sacrifice first, get in front, and set the direction. Sacrifice first, get in front, and set the direction. And if I could if I could encapsulate those three phrases with one word, it would be this, intentionality. Intentionality. And, and really, I want us to think about being intentional in one particular area, and that's spiritual health. I want you to, to think about what it looks like for you to be intentional um, with your spiritual health, as well as those of uh, who are in your group and their spiritual health. And when we think about that, what it means to sacrifice first, um, to get in front, and those sorts of things, that intentionality, I, I think a question should arise and come to our minds that I want I really want to put forward to you guys, and it's this, how are you doing? How are you doing? And I really, to, to be able to ask that question to other people, particularly those that are in your community group, you've got to ask yourself that question first. And that's part of that sacrificing first, that in order to care for, love, and lead other people, you've got to have a, a pulse on your heart. You've got to know what's going on in your life, how you're doing. And so, I would encourage you to look at your own life. How are you doing? How's your how's your uh, your walk? How are you doing fighting sin, pursuing God? How are you doing uh, loving God and loving other people? What in your life needs to to stop? What do you need to keep doing? Those sorts of things. And the reason is because when you ask yourself that question and you take an honest assessment of your own life, you then can ask that question of other people. And so that's the second thing is. Um, to, to, to have that intentionality, to get in front, to take steps of action in your group, to promote spiritual health in their lives, you need to ask that question of them. How are you doing? And I think that probably can happen in a, uh, a group setting, but it also needs to happen at a, uh, a personal individual setting as well. I was encouraged last night. I went to our my wife and I's new community group and we were praying for one another uh, through this detox series, and one of the per one of the people in the group um, opened up and just was honest that they were struggling with uh, having bitterness in their heart. And for some of you, that might not be encouraging at all. You're like, I can't believe you shared that. But it was actually very encouraging for me because I saw a level of authenticity uh, that uh, she trusted everyone in the group and was open and willing to ask for help, that she needed prayer in that, that she she knew that she wasn't okay with that, but she wanted prayer in that area. And so I would encourage for you to seek that out in your groups as well. And one of the things I really want to encourage you with uh, in closing is, is thinking about this. How can you model, inspire, and equip your group to grow in their spiritual health? How can you model, inspire, and equip your group, your group to grow in spiritual health. And just for some of you, that might be overwhelming. Like I have no idea what the next step is. I don't know how we're going to do that. And I, I want you to, number one, you always need to know this. And I hope you do is that I'm always a resource for you. I will always want to, to be able to, um, be there for you if you need help processing something or you need more resources in an area or whatever it might be. So don't hesitate to reach out. But secondly, I want to encourage you to use this detox season as an opportunity uh, to use that as an opportunity for spiritual growth. And so some of you might need to uh, really encourage and challenge your community group to go through this Daniel fast together. Um, in that detox booklet, you can find that at vcnola.com slash detox. We'll also have some of those 
at our gathering this weekend, uh, there's a 12-day Daniel uh, devotional through the book of Daniel. And it's very basic, but it could be something really great to challenge your, your group in. And so maybe that's a great thing. Maybe you want to read the Bible together. Maybe you want to pray for one another more. Whatever it might be, take that baby step. What is that next thing that you need to do to help your group grow in that spiritual growth? And so as you think about that, whatever it might be, all along the way, you're going to find these ways, these opportunities to be in intentional, to sacrifice first, to get in front, those sorts of things. And I want to encourage you to take this opportunity to be intentional with your spiritual health as well as your group's spiritual health. One of the ways that I always want to be able to help in that, and for some of you, I hope this isn't a burden, but in the past we've been doing these accountability forms, and I've changed the name of these to a care uh, update because I really want you to see that as an opportunity to just share with me uh, how I can be caring for you, how you're doing. And so at the end of the email, you're going to see a link for that. If you've not filled out your report yet, please do so. Um, so I can be able to care for you, so I can care for your spiritual health as well. And so hope this is encouraging for you. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm thankful for each of you, and I hope you have a great day. See you guys.